Hello everyone, this is Christian Melodix Town Interactive and in this video we will begin the process of going step by step setting up Webpack the way that I normally have it set up for uh, projects. So in this video we'll take care of bundling up JavaScript and CSS and placing those bundles into their appropriate uh, folders within our a root folder here. So I have JavaScript in the JavaScript folder, CSS in the CSS folder, and the outcome will be this beautiful result here of a blue background and hello world written in the console. So let's go ahead and get started here. So of course the first thing to do since this video is all about Webpack is to make sure that uh, it, Webpack is installed within the project. So as a bit of background here, this is the same project that I've used for the past few videos here. We're just going to, I've already deleted things so that we can basically start over. But I already have a lot of the packages installed here. So I won't have to reinstall them. But as with all videos, I've also written an article that goes with it, which you can uh, check out in the link in the description below, which gives basically step-by-step -step what I'm doing and commands when needed for installing different packages using the, the terminal and NPM. So you can uh, check those out there. Of course, we need to start by having uh, Webpack and the Webpack CLI installed. In addition to that, uh, just to let you know, of course, this is a uh, basically a almost blank or almost brand new ASP.NET uh, core application. That actually does not matter at all. It could be just a uh, empty folder that you started a new project in. The only reason I mention it is is that basically what we're going to do is put uh, the f you know files that we need, source files in the source folder, and we're going to need our bundles to be spit out into our www root folder here inside of you know JS or CSS or any other folder inside of there that we need. All right, so what we're going to do to get started here is to create our, you know, basically starting point for our application. So let's go into the source folder here, new file, we'll call it index.js. Inside of there, we're just going to make a console log statement, friend hello world is back, so we'll close that. And of course, video is all about Webpack, so we need a Webpack config. So in the root of our uh, project here, we'll say webpack.config.js. So now we're good, we'll close that. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do within our, our configuration file here is to define a constant called mode, and that's gonna be from process.env. Node env, and it will either be whatever it is or development. I forgot to mention, although again, like I said, it's in the um, article itself. If we look inside the package.json along with the packages that are already installed, there is this build script here, which is basically what we're going to do to use to set the node environment to development and then kick off uh, Webpack. Let's go ahead and close that. Back to our Webpack config file here. So we need a way to tell Webpack where to start creating our bundles, and we'll create an entry object. The entry point can be a single string. You know, there's a couple of different options. The object is the you know most robust. It's the most uh, gives you the most flexibility. So we'll define a key here of index, and then the so the key will be used by Webpack when we finish the configuration to give names to our bundles. And then we need to tell it where that, where the starting point is. And as we saw, it's inside the source folder and it's called index.js. So now we, tell, we have told Webpack where to start. We need to tell it uh, where to put the bundle. So const output also an object, so we'll give it a file name, 
that file name, like I said. So we have the uh, sort of uh, wildcard here. So this uh, square bracket is name. Webpack will automatically take the key from the entry object and stick it into the name there. And so we'll have index.bundle.js when we're done. We also need to tell it where to put it. And we'll just whoop, use the current directory that we're in. And like I said, we need it to be inside the root folder inside of the JS folder. So we have root here and JavaScript folder here. All right, so now we have basically configured it. So let's do module exports. And it's gonna just export the entry object that we created, the mode and the output object. Go ahead and save that and bring up our terminal here. Like I said, we have that command npm run build. Save that and now Webpack is telling us that it spit out our index.bundle.js file. So we'll go over here, take a look. So now we have index.bundle.js. Close a bunch of this stuff here. So at the top of our file, we have a whole mess of Webpack bootstrapping stuff. We don't need to worry about that. It's nothing to do with us. If we come down here to the bottom, we'll see that the source slash index.js has created this little bundle. So it's wrapped in a function. And we'll see inside of here, here's our console log hello world statement. So of course, to be able to uh, see anything in, in the browser, we need to create a page to put it. Close up some of this. I'm just gonna put it in the root of our folder here, root of our project. And I'll just call it index.html. I think it's, no, I think it's just, there we go. <laughs> we want this stuff, I don't want any of this. We'll give it a title here. Webpack for step by step. All right, so what do we need? We need our script tag and inside of here, source, and where is it located? The dub root, JavaScript, index.bundle.js. Let's go ahead and save that. Bring up Firefox here. Just drag it over. Really did not just want to get rid of my... Right, come back up there. We'll make a new tab. All right, let's take a look and we can see in the uh, console here, we have our hello world statement. So that's all working the way it's supposed to be. Turn to the notes here and next step. Let's add, since Webpack is configured to deal with uh, JavaScript out of the box, we didn't have to do anything outside of this minimal configuration. So let's now add some CSS to our page. Turn to our source folder. We're just gonna create it in the source folder itself. Call it index.css. Inside of here, we are just going to set the background color of our body to blue. Put it all in one line so it's easier to see inside the uh, bundle when we take a look. Let's go ahead and close that. We don't need the CSS or our bundle. We'll come back to the HTML here in a second. All right, so now we need to tell Webpack that we want to com uh, compile that. So in the end, what I want to end up with is an index.bundle.js file and an index.bundle.css file. So we'll come back here to our entry point. We'll use that key, but now we'll convert this to an array of strings. And the entry point for this one, source uh, slash slash index.css. Save that. Let's take a look here at what we have. So we run that and whoop, it fails. 
And like I said, it's failing because out of the box, Webpack knows how to handle JavaScript, but uh, we're out of luck with any other um, file type. So to deal with that, you may need an appropriate loader to handle this file type, which indeed we do. So again, we'll return to npm or the console and let's find it down here. We have the error there. So what we're gonna do is install the CSS loader. I said it's already installed at the time. This is the version number. So we'll return back to our JavaScript or the uh, webpack.config file. And uh, what we need to do is add another object here. The property with inside the exports for the configuration object is module. Can use module because it'll crush that module there. So we'll, I'll just use underscore module. And that's equal to, like I said, an object. Inside of this object is a rules property, which is an array. That array contains a set of objects. And uh, one of the properties on the object is a test, which is a regular expression. So we'll look for files that end in um, CSS. And uh, just for thoroughness, Probably don't need this in our current situation, but let's just ignore node modules. And we'll have the use. And inside of the use, um, so it's a, an array of modules, either strings or well, strings basically. We'll have the CSS loader, which is the uh, loader that we uh, created previously. We'll see here in just a little bit that the order is from the bottom to the top. So it's applied to our, basically the uh, output of whatever, you know, in this case it will be a JavaScript string and then that string will get converted. Eh, I guess it's not a job. It takes the contents of our file converts it, and in this case is going to create a string and put it in our JavaScript, but we'll see that shortly. So let's go on down here, and uh, what we need to do is now, of course, input or import the module. So module is module. Save that. Back to our terminal, and npm run build. All right, so now, if we don't have an error, let's take a look at the bundle. So index bundle in here, let's close the terminal. What we'll see now is we still have the Webpack stuff at the top, but we have a few more things that are being added at the bottom here. This was the starting point here. We have this css-base.js. This is involved here because we're doing, you have the CSS loader have our console log statement there, and then we have our output of our index.css. So as I was talking about, rather ineloquently, what we did was the Webpack saw that index.css file. Since uh, we have that test for files that end in .css, it passed that you know file basically to the CSS loader, CSS loader, took care of converting the CSS into a string, and now we have our CSS embedded within our JavaScript bundle. And we can see our CSS is here, body, background color blue. Now, in some instances, this is what we want. So for instance, for, the, for an Angular component, we embed the styles within the JavaScript bundle. Angular takes care of extracting it from the bundle and injecting it and a link tag in the head of the browser. This particular instance, we do not want the JavaScript in the in a CSS or in a or we do not want the CSS in a JavaScript string. So let's return back to we'll close that or turn back to our webpack.config file and we'll back to importing again. 
So what we need to do is to extract the CSS from that string and create a CSS file from it. And to do that, we're going to install another package from NPM, which is this mini CSS extract plugin. Shows the uh, version number there. Of course, it's already installed in this project. Let's return to the top here. So const mini CSS extract plugin gonna require request animation frame. So mini CSS extract plugin. Now we have it. Like I said, we need to apply it to our uh, rules here. So CSS loader takes that CSS file and converts it into a string. So we'll come above that and we'll do the uh, mini CSS extract plugin. And we need dot loader for that. All right, so now it will take care of uh, pulling that string out and creating a bundle out of it. But we do need to configure it so it knows what to do. So we'll come down here, create a new object. We'll call it plugins and we'll new up a mini CSS extract plugin and we're going to give it a um, option object. Expected. Oh. <laughs> what we want is for our plugins not to be an object but to be an array of plugins. All right, so now what we have to do is to tell it basically where to put this CSS file as well as what the name should be. So we'll just call file name here, pass a string, keeping in mind that right now what's happening is we're, our bundle is located within the JavaScript folder. So we want our file name to be specified relative to there. So we'll go up one folder, go into the CSS folder, still have our name wildcard bundle.css. And we need to add our plugins down here. Save that. Whoops, didn't mean to close that one. <laughs> uh, Webpack doc, let's go ahead and close that. All right. So now we are, once again, back to the terminal, building again, and we'll see at this time we have the JavaScript bundle as well as the CSS bundle. If we come back in here, we can take a look. We have our CSS written up there where it's supposed to be. And what we need to do, of course, is to add our link to this, and it's in the root. CSS, let's go ahead and save that. And we'll come back to our project. And now we can see that our body is in fact blue. We still have our hello world written in the console. And so I think that will take care of it for this video. Just to wrap it up, basically what we have now is the ability to, well, process JavaScript into a bundle where we want it to go, as well as process CSS into a bundle into a separate location. In the next video, what do I talk about in the next one? Next one we'll talk uh, about converting this. I don't usually use CSS. You know, of course, write most things in SAS. So we'll convert this over so that uh, Webpack can take care of SAS files as well as at the same time we'll uh, get it working with Auto Prefixer. And I'll uh, talk to you in the next video. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. I know that your time is valuable. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button, as well as share the video with your friends. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And once again, thank you, and I will talk to you in the next video.